Hey everyone, Keely here for Soy and Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. We will be making some soap, but first of all, I'm opening a little package that has been sent to me by Lee, who runs Bath Body Bliss here in Australia. Go and check her out, there's links down in the description box. Now, Lee is one of my patrons, and a little while ago, um, she put on our group page for Create with Soy and Shay that her son Snake had had a shed and was anyone interested in having a go at using snake skin in their soap. Now this is something that has actually interested me for a little while but I don't know anyone who has snakes so I've not been able to try it. So I jumped at the chance to grab some of this snake skin and someone else on the page also did so she split the skin between the two of us. Ooh and she she has sent me some of it here so sorry if any of you are squeamish um, but she has sent me this um, bit of skin and it that's a big piece of skin because you don't need a lot when it comes to soap making now I have been doing a whole lot of research about how to use snake skin in soap and why we actually use it as well there's a lot of um, information out there which I really honestly just laughed at um, as a lot of people are saying they would never use it because of bacteria bacteria etc etc I am actually going to give this a little bit of a clean with some um, antibacterial soapy water and give it a spray with some rubbing alcohol but at the end of the day most people will also tell you, most people in the soaping industry will also tell you that the naturally high pH level of soap kills any bacteria and doesn't let it grow in soap so it's perfectly fine to use now why would we actually put snake skin into soap it is because of the makeup of the skin it's got a lot of things like keratin in it and what that does for the soap that doesn't come through as any sort of skin benefits but it gives the soap a beautiful shine and a slip and feel and it just makes it feel really really good on the skin a bit like when you add things like tussar silk and bamboo silk so I'm going to go and get this cleaned up and then we're going to go ahead and um, make up our lye water with this so all I'm going to do is go and wash it off with a bit of antibacterial soapy water let it dry give it a spray with some 70% um, rubbing alcohol and then we'll get on to the soap making So our snake skin has now been washed and I've given it a bit of a spray. I was going to let it dry out completely, but then I remembered I'm putting it into water. So why let it dry out? Anyhow, what we're going to do, we don't actually need a lot of snake skin to do this. It's a bit like, as I said, using tussar silk or bamboo silk or anything else. So I'm only going to cut myself off a very small amount to start with. We'll see how we go. Might do just a little bit more than that like so and what I'm going to do is add it straight into my water so I've already got all that measured out now in my reading I did come across some very interesting things and one of them is that there is a concern about um, some gases which may come off the lye water when you pour in your sodium hydroxide so for that reason I am going to put a mask on but before anyone gets too panicked about it interestingly the same um, gases that can actually be created by mixing the snake skin with the lye also happens when you put sugar into your lye water so if you're using sugar it does exactly the same thing make sure you've got your mask on and you're in a well ventilated area when you do this now it's because I've only got a small amount in here it is not going to be lethal it is just something to be aware of so I'm gonna get my mask on and then I'm gonna pour the sodium hydroxide into our water here Okay, so the exothermic reaction would have started now, so this is gonna to start to get hot. I'm just gonna give this a bit of a stir and it will help to break down that snake skin as well. Just half covering the top of this just to limit some of the gases which are coming out. And I can already see that that snake skin is starting to break down. I'm happy that I have stirred that enough that all of the um, lye or the sodium hydroxide is not sitting on the bottom. And then what I tend to do is leave my lid on these so we don't 
first of all we're not getting let's take the mask off first of all we're not getting all those fumes coming up and secondly when your um, lye water heats up it is creating steam and you are losing some of that water content so I like to keep my lid on to make sure that I'm not losing any water I'm gonna leave this to set up it will take overnight for me to set up to come down to room temperature and in that time I'm gonna work out what soap I'm gonna make Okay, so we are ready to start making this soap. Now, if you look closely, you can see we do still have some of the skin which hasn't dissolved in the lye water. So to make sure that this is not actually going into the soap, I have got my strainer and we're going to strain that through. And this is pretty typical from what I've seen of people using the skin in their soap. Um, it has dissolved some of it, but not all of it. So now we've got that in there. I'm gonna give it a mix and then we'll be back to split it up for the colors and I'll explain my color choice then. Okay, so we've got that mixed up and I'm gonna split it out for a couple of colors. First one I have got in here is a little bit of titanium dioxide which I've dispersed in some water and we're going to go for about that sort of much. I'm going to put my stick blender in there so we don't contaminate our white when we go to mix it. Into this container I have got some activated charcoal. We're going to need a little bit more of that one. Ah, that should do. Maybe a bit more. I always eyeball it unless I want a really um, defined layer. I pretty much eyeball everything. Uh, and then into this one, I have got some orange pop mica and I'm going to put in a fair amount, enough that it's going to give a really bright, vibrant color, but not so much that it's going to stain fingers. So we've got that one in. Let's get these colors mixed up. And then I'll, as we do the fragrance, I'll let you know why I chose these particular colors. Okay, so we're gonna grab our fragrance here and I've gone for a bit of a sort of natural woody sort of blend. It's got notes of bamboo, there's bergamot, lemon, jasmine, a bit of lavender, musk and wood. And I have made some little rays of sunshine with this one. And when I made those, it did behave okay. So let's hope that it behaves okay again. Um, it smells really, really nice and it does smell a little bit like um, you're out in the bush so that's why I've chosen this one and the colors that I've gone for if anyone knows their snakes they may have already guessed what the color theme is actually about um, I actually watched this guy doing the shorts on YouTube um, called Molinaro Molinaro snake lab I think that's what he's called and I really like watching him because he actually breeds snakes for other people to have usually the little snakes um, like the ball pythons and things like that but one of the snakes that always fascinates me and I knew about them before I even saw um, his videos as well is the tricolor hog nose and it's such a gorgeous looking snake to me i'm actually not frightened of snakes my husband's frightened of snakes and i'm frightened of spiders so <laughs> i actually do find that snakes are quite fascinating and i've always liked the tricolor hog nose because if you know anything about animals and their coloring you'll know that the brighter the colors are on an animal the more likely they are to be dangerous in some way so it always fascinates me that the tricolor tri hog nose it has this awesome orange to red um, color on it with some black and white stripes and usually it will go a thick layer of an orange and then a thinner layer of black and then a thinner of white and then it goes black and back into orange so like a banded sort of color but they're actually although they do have venom they are not particularly venomous to humans i am gonna have to give that just a little bit of a stick blend because i can see it's got a tiny bit of ricin in it so yeah despite the quite bright vibrant color the hot tricolor hog nose is not particularly venomous to humans. It does have venom and just enough to you know, kill its prey, but it doesn't actually really harm humans like say a red belly black or something like a mum, mumbo, mamba, 
one <laughs> they're one of the African snakes that are quite um, lethal if they do bite you um, so I do think that's quite fascinating because most of the time if they're that brightly colored they are venomous to humans as well but this one isn't just to its prey so we're gonna go for those colors from off that tricolor hog nose let me grab my mold now we're not going to go for real definite layers here but I am going to try and get a bit of layering going through so we're going to pour a fairly thick one of the orange so we've got about half of what I had in my bucket that's looking good we'll give it a bit of a shuffle because the floors in here are not even so the pores not even I'm gonna do some of this black I am gonna use the spatula and see if we can get it to kind of Oh yes, it's going to kind of layer on the top there. It is thickening up on me. I don't want it perfectly layered because I am going to put the hanger through, but I don't want the big drops in it either. So let's get that on there. We'll get the white and then I'll finish getting the rest of these colors in. And as I said, I'm going to put the hanger through it too. So I'm going to keep the top of this one very simple and I'm just going to do a bit of a spoon top here. We might come in from both sides because I really want this soap to be more about the actual snake skin than any of the sort of fancy decorations that we do. It is smelling absolutely amazing. I really like this fragrance. Funny thing is when I made my little rays of sunshine, it behaved really well. And yet in this one, it has thickened up and it's not anything to do with that snake skin that's in here. Um, what it will be to do with is the fact that my oils may be at a slightly different temperature. Um, last time I used it, we had quite dry weather and now we've got a little bit of humidity. It's one of the reasons I don't really test my fragrances other than to see how well they hold in soap and whether they discolor because at the end of the day little factors like change in weather, changing your soaping temperature, anything like that can actually change how a fragrance behaves and it's another reason I don't really pay any attention to other people's reviews on fragrances because you don't know enough about their recipe, about how they soap or anything else um, to really make judgment and I find some fragrances I use in summer are a nightmare to use in winter and vice versa so <laughs> I always just wing it and see what happens. I'm going to just dip all of those little peaks down like so and that is going to be it. We're going to leave this one set up overnight and we'll come back and we'll cut it tomorrow and see what sort of swirls we've got through those layers. Okay so we are back to cut into this one. I do have a little bit of soda ash on the top of this but I will give it a bit of a spritz with some rubbing alcohol a bit later and that will get rid of that. Let's get it cut open and we'll see what swirls we have got on the inside here. So let's get this one all lined up on Ida. All right just bump it down just a wee bit there. All right let's cut through and let's take a look. Ooh, and there it is. Not much white. Oh, not much white on that side, but look at that side. Absolutely love it. And it really does remind me of those tricolored hognose snakes. Oh, look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Really, really pleased. I don't think I've done a soap like this for a long, long time with the layers and then putting that hanger through. So really really happy now when I put the hanger through I you can kind of see what I've done with it let me grab another piece here so as I put the hanger through I went up down up down up down and then I actually went back through and did a slight little um, swirl with it as well a lot of people ask me how you do hanger swirls 
honestly, it is all just feel. There is no right or wrong way, and it's pretty much like you went when sorry, but like when you pour soap, that is a mouthful. Um, it does what it wants, and it's always a surprise. So you can do the same swirl with your hanger every time but depending upon what the consistency of the soap is and things like that it will depend upon what sort of swirls that you get so i could do this again and it could be thinner and we'll get a different pattern or it might be a thicker soap and we'd get a, a different pattern again so when it comes to your hanger you just go for it and see what you get at the end but I am so super happy with these. It's smelling really good as well. Really like this fragrance. Um, and I can't wait to actually try this and see what that snake skin actually does for the soap. It should give it a beautiful shine, really nice lather as well. I can actually feel that the soap has a slightly different sort of feel to it. It does actually feel smoother in my fingers similar to when you're using that tussar silk i no longer actually put the tussar silk into my soaps um but it that's that sort of feel that it's got but i'm really really pleased with how this one has come up so a big thank you to lee for giving me the opportunity to have a go at putting snake skin into my soaps so this one will be heading off to the cure rack when it is ready i will try and do a little short video showing a lather test on this one in a few weeks time so you can see what it does i hope you've enjoyed coming along with me as i had my little experiment with the snake skin soap if you did why not leave me a thumbs up oh and any comments down below and until the next video i hope you have a good one and i will see you then bye